Coming up, we look at everything you need to know about cardiovascular diseases, including the causes of coronary heart disease and heart attacks. We look at the advantages and the disadvantages of stents, as well as statins, and how artificial valves and hearts are being used. The heart is one of our most vital organs, pumping blood carrying everything our cells need throughout the circulatory system, so when things go wrong, it can be devastating for our health. Let's start off by looking at coronary heart disease. This is one of the major causes of death worldwide. Coronary heart disease is caused by a blockage in the coronary artery, which supplies blood to the muscle of the heart. The blockage is caused by layers of fatty material building up in the walls of the coronary artery. This causes the arteries to become narrow and so the blood flow is restricted, causing a lack of oxygen to the heart muscle. As the walls get thicker, there is a higher risk of them rupturing, causing a clot to form at the site of the rupture. This clot then blocks the supply of blood to the heart and this is what triggers a heart attack. During a heart attack, the heart muscles may be damaged and begin to die as they get starved of oxygen. Without treatment, the heart muscles will experience irreversible damage. If a large portion of the heart is damaged in this way, the heart can stop beating and this can result in death. Symptoms that people usually experience when they're having a heart attack includes chest pains, so sensation of pressure or tightness or squeezing in the center of their chest. Some people also report the pain traveling from their chest to their arms, also their jaw or neck or tummy. If you experience any of these symptoms, it's important to call for medical help, as the longer you leave it, the more chance there is that the tissue will get damaged and die. There are a few things that we can do to help prevent a heart attack from happening. By identifying where the coronary arteries are narrow, we can carry out a medical procedure which involves inserting a small mesh tube or a stent as it's called, into the narrowed artery. The procedure involves running a thin tube up through a major blood vessel, usually through the groin, until it reaches the coronary artery. The stent is a mesh, and as it gets close to the area where it needs to be, it's actually attached to a balloon. And as the mesh passes through the area where the artery is narrow, the balloon inflates to put the mesh firmly into place. The balloon then deflates, gets pulled away, and that actual stent holds the artery open so that the blood can flow through easily. It sounds like a simple procedure, but there are lots of advantages, disadvantages, that you need to be aware of for your exam. So the main advantages of having a stent is that they lower your risk of a heart attack. They also are designed to last for a long time, and once you've had the procedure, there's quite a quick recovery time. However, there are also disadvantages. During the operation, you're at a much higher risk of having a heart attack and also infection from having the procedure done. You're also at risk of developing something called a thrombosis. A thrombosis is a blood clot that can form near where the stent is during the lifetime of having a stent. Another type of cardiovascular issue that people have revolves around faulty valves. If you have a faulty valve, then the blood can start to pool and start to form a clot. If this clot then travels around the body, such as to the heart, which causes a heart attack, or gets pumped to the brain, it can cause a blockage which can result in a stroke. We can look at repairing valves or replacing valves using either animal valves, such as from a pig, or putting a mechanical valve in place. Here we can see a mechanical valve replacing an existing faulty heart valve. The valve's put into place, it then expands like we saw in the stent, and now hopefully it'll keep the blood flowing in the right direction and prevent clotting as we saw with the faulty valve. If a patient has heart failure and there are no donor organs available, a doctor may fit an artificial heart, which is a mechanical device. And the idea behind this is that it's a temporary fix to keep the person alive until there is a donor heart available. The main advantage of using this artificial heart is they're less likely to be rejected by the body's immune system. And this is because they're made out of metal or made out of plastic, but they can result in quite a few issues. They can have bleeding, infection, 
and also they don't work as well as natural ones because they can wear out and the electrical motor could fail as well. Cholesterol is an essential chemical that your body produces to function properly. However, for some people, they have too much of a bad type of cholesterol called LDL cholesterol, and this can collect and form fatty deposits inside the walls of the artery, which is the major cause of coronary heart disease. A drug that can be given to reduce the amount of bad cholesterol that you have inside your blood is a chemical called a statin. And what statins do is they slow down the rate at which fatty deposits form by reducing the amount of bad cholesterol in the blood. So there are advantages and disadvantages of taking statins. One of the main advantages is that they lower your risks of strokes, coronary heart disease, and heart attacks. They also increase the amount of good cholesterol, which removes the bad cholesterol as well. And that's called HDL, the good cholesterol. Studies have also shown that statins can prevent other diseases. Some of the disadvantages about statins though is you need to take them regularly, you have to also take them long term, so for the rest of your life. Some people also complain about side effects whilst taking statins, and this can range from muscle aches to even more serious conditions such as diabetes and even kidney failure. And finally we look at artificial blood. So when somebody loses a lot of blood, the heart can still keep pumping the remaining blood cells around the body, provided the volume of the blood can be topped up. So artificial blood is a salt solution, so saline solution, which is designed to replace the lost volume of the blood. It's really safe, provided there's no air bubbles, and you can lose up to about two thirds of your red blood cells and still be able to give the patients enough time to produce new blood cells by giving them the artificial blood. So there you go, that's everything you need to know for GCSE science on cardiovascular diseases. If you found this video useful, give us a thumbs up or subscribe. Have a great day.